Good evening. Hi, folks. Terry from Smooth Watch up here. Right. Um, <clears throat> you may recall a little while ago, uh, I did a product review on a fantastic uh, water-based acrylic polyurethane primer um, by Badger in USA called Steiner Res in the black. Well, they've brought some more colours out and uh, I've been sent some samples to try out. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to <clears throat> show you the new samples and uh, the colours and how they go on. It's the most fantastic primer I have ever used. Uh, I generally don't use anything else um, in the acrylics and polyurethanes for primers now other than Badger Steiner is. Um, unless I'm using a lacquer, I'll go in for the Tamiya stuff, but for non-toxic, easy to clean up, goes on really flawlessly. You don't have to do like super thin coats. Stuff goes on brilliant. So that's the stuff you all know about, and that's the review that's already on my channel about the Badger Stein Res. I think I sprayed up. Um, oh, he squashed the man. Give me a second, my chair's creaking away here. Sorry, I've got my computer chair to do it, it's a bit old. I uh, sprayed up that little Jeep with the Steiner Res. That was that stuff. Well, there's different colours now. Um, so I'm going to go into that. So, without any further ado, let's just go and watch a video. Hey guys, welcome back. Terry from Smooth Workshop, and welcome to my product review of the six new Badger Steiner Res colours. Um, I have a review up already um, on my channel where I talked about the uh, the Badger Steiner Res in the black, which is a water-based acrylic polyurethane hard-wearing um, primer. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Really easy to put on. Um, it's got lovely uh, self-level qualities about it. So um, it takes out imperfections. If you spray it on thick enough, you can... You can actually use it as a filler. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't take long to dry. It's got a really fine pigment in it, so it's really good for sanding and everything. Um, it's got really good adhesion, um, and it dries to a really hard, uh, flat finish, apart from one of the new colours, which I'll go into in a minute. You can use it in plastics, so it's styrene, vinyl, resin. Uh, you can use it in metals, woods, and try it in anything, basically. Um, and you can brush it on or use it in an airbrush and on this one i'm going to be using it in an airbrush but the good thing about this it's it's non-toxic it's nice and safe it's yeah it's a, an acrylic poly polyurethane so um that's the original um the black primer uh it's a 60 ml bottle there i've got a two ounce it comes in a four ounce i think it comes in an eight ounce as well um so that's the one i've already reviewed and if you watched that review, you would have seen me. Now, pardon the dust. I sprayed up this lovely little Jeep. I'm just trying to get the lighting better on this. Um, I did the whole Jeep in the the black standard Steiner resin. It gives a lovely sort of satin black uh, finish. And it's just absolutely beautiful to work with. So that's the standard one, which I've already done a review on. Okay. So I've been sent some samples. Um, in the UK, um, the company that I get these from is Steve Puffer, and it's Barwell Body Works, and his website and email address and telephone numbers are on there. So if you're wondering where to get Steiner Res in the UK, that's where you go for. Uh, he also does it on the Barwell UK Airbrush Supplies. Now, um, the colours that you guys will all be familiar with, when they first came out, there was the three colours. You had your, your standard black, which I've just described, and there's a grey and a white as well. Um, they then came out with a reddish brown or ochre, uh, an olive green or an olive drab, and um, a neutral yellow. Um, so that's the six that are currently out. And then they've brought a new range of six out, which I've got the samples of. Um, now, this might be quite good for uh, figure builders. They have a light flesh based on. An ebony flesh based on for the darker colours. They have got a dull pink. We'll see what colour that comes out as. They have an oceanic blue. They have a new metallic one. Now that sounds quite interesting. And a black gloss. Now that the black gloss is the only one that doesn't dry to a flat finish, obviously, because it's gloss. Um, the advantages behind that, I am thinking, how a lot of us will put a primer down 
and then put a gloss coat on and go on with our metallic finishes to get an ultra high shine is that bypasses one step and it already goes down as a gloss primer. So we'll see how that looks um, and the rest of them as well. So that's where to get them. Okay, so that's the Badger Steiner Res. So uh, as I said, there's six new colours. So I've, as I say, I've been sent samples. So there is the light flesh. Okay, and then we have the uh, ebony flesh. And then we have the dull pink. Okay, so that's three new ones. And the other three new ones are an oceanic blue, a metal one or metallic, and this one is the black gloss. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, they recommend that you put it through a 0.4 or greater airbrush, same as with the standard Steiner S, although people are managing to get them through 0.3 airbrushes. But Badger themselves recommend a 0.4 or greater. I will be using a Iwata Revolution CR, which has a 0.5 needle in it. Um, at a pressure of around, they say between 25 and 30 PSI. I find that the black spray is fine at 25, so we'll see how we'll get on with the rest of these. Um, I do a little bit of paint prep. I'm going to be doing them on spoons, um, as usual. I'll, I'll spray the colours on the spoons and I'll, I'll let you see what the actual colour looks like against the spoon. I do a little bit of paint prep on a new bottle. So when you get a new bottle, I'll, I'll use this flesh stone as it's one of the lightest ones. I'll probably do that first. Um, when you take the cap off, there is a little protective film in there. Now you could sit and do what everybody else does and shake and shake and shake and shake and shake and be there for absolutely bloody ages. So what I do, so I take the cap off and I'll see if I can get this little, okay. Well, gives you a wee bit of an idea of the, the colour there, after shaking it up on there. So I'll take that cap off and I'll pop that away in my bin and wipe my fingers because I've now got flesh tone in my thumb. Right, so what I tend to do is you can buy stainless steel paint mixers. Now use either stainless steel or glass. Don't use iron because they'll tint your paint. Okay, and the ones I use are um, AMIG 8 double zero three and it's Mig Jimenez, Jimenez um, that makes those so I tend to pop oops I'm spinning my um, X-wing off in the background there I tend to pop a couple of these little steel balls um, just to help the agitation so let's see if we can get the bag open I pop a, little, a couple of little steel balls into these so this is just covering the paint prep Okay, so one, move it in the shot, one steel ball, and another steel ball. Okay, and I'll do that in each bottle, but just for initial use, I always just get my Tamiya paint stirrer. If you've got one of these electric stirrers, don't put the steel balls in first. You'll damage your stirrer if you've got one of these badger ones. And just getting the heavy pigment up to the bottom, and just giving it a wee bit of stir about. I'll do that on initial use, uh, and I'm going to be spraying a bit shortly as well, so... I don't know how long these have been lying in storage or anything. So yeah, I'm just uh, giving them an initial mix. It's quite a nice colour actually. Let's see what comes off on there. It's quite a nice base flesh tone to start with. So if you're a figurine painter, sometimes you might go in with white. But you can go in, the, go in with this new flesh tone and then build up, use that as your base and build up your, your colour layers from there. So I've given that um, a good mix and I've got my steel balls in it. Good thing about these ones is you've got a nice pop open cap for dispensing. Just remember when you pour your paint out, just make sure you clean off any excess paint so it can click together nicely. And then you can hear the agitator balls working away in there. So what I'm going to go and do is uh, I'm going to set up in the spray booth. Stop shaking for just now. We set up in the spray booth and with spoons, I shall show you spraying this new flesh stone, see how it goes on uh, and show you the clean up, uh, how easy it is to clean. And then off camera, I will go and spray all the other spoons. I'll do all the paint prep and all the other colours. And then uh, when we come back, we can have a look and, and see the colour swatch of the new range of paint. So um, I'm away off to the paint booth now 
and I'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Welcome back. Right, just a quick addendum. Um, I've um, went and uh, prepped all these these bottles by uh, putting my agitator balls in and giving them a quick stir. What I have noticed compared to the, uh, the original Black Stinger is these all seem to be a little bit thinner, uh, including the gloss black. Um, so I'm not going to experiment with air pressures on them, but they are j just an observation that when I was stirring them up, they are all noticeably slightly thinner than the original black. Um, and the new gloss black is um, nice and thin as well. So that might alleviate some of the problems. I don't know if they've made them slightly thinner um, in the makeup um, so that it, People don't have problems putting them through the airbrush at such high pressures or not. Um, it's just an observation. So I'm uh, going to set up now for the, the paint booth and um, we'll put this one down first, the, the new light flesh tone, and uh, I'll show you my spray it on. Um, you don't need a lot of this paint. Um, that's the other good thing. Because they are slightly thicker than your normal primers, a little drop goes a long, long way, especially on the blacks, um, and we'll find out how these ones go as well. So I'm off to the spray booth, and I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back, Terry from Smooth Workshop. Right, okay, so we're getting set up here for um, doing the, the, the first test spray. Um, we're going to go with a light flesh tone, uh, which is a new colour for Badger Stino Res. Um, I've got my compressor set up roughly about 25 PSI. Um, this is my, my paint booth. It's just a cheap one. Um, so you're going to get a bit of noise for the paint booth. And you might hear my compressor in the background. But it's, it's just for this uh, one shot. And I'm just trying to see if I can get in a little bit better on the subject. Without getting my snazzy jammies in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so um, <clears throat> I've got my blue glove on. Because I tend to just use it on my left hand. So I'm going to be spraying a spoon. Just a plastic spoon. I've dressed it up um, with a buffy stick, uh, just to put a slight key on it. Um, so it's it's basically bare plastic. Um, so I've airbrush is all clean. I've uh, done the agitator balls. Shook it all up. So cap off and let's try to see if you are try to get the best camera angle here. Um, I'm not going to put a lot in the airbrush. That's only a small spoon, so there's my airbrush. And I'm just going to put a few drops in. Because um, I don't think I'll need an awful lot to do a spoon. So there's really not a lot in there. Um, and if it's anything like the other Steno Reses that I've used, it will be uh, good for coverage. So I'm just doing a wee pull through with the airbrush. See if I can sign my name. It's not hissing away. It's coming through nicely. So I'm going to put my extractor booth on. So that's going to make a noise. And you've probably heard my compressor kicking in. So apologies for noise. I'll try and talk up over it. I'm not going to video all of it. I'm just going to try and show you how this stuff goes on. So air booth on. Um, I'm not, I've got such a small amount. I'm not going to spill it. I'm not even going to bother putting my cap on. <laughs> Here's hoping. So um, dust off the part. And... I'll go in my light mist to start with. Try and get the edges in that. So that's just a really light dust coat on there. And I'm just going to let that flash off for a wee minute. Um, before I go in with a slightly heavier coat. And uh, we'll, we'll see where the colour goes on that. Spraying flawlessly, I'm getting no hissing through the airbrushes. I see I've got that uh, on a 0.5 needle at 25 psi. So, um, with a black, you can kind of flood it. So that's a mist on. I'll go in with a slightly heavier coat. Try to get a bit more coverage on there. And round about the edges. So I'm just going to let that flash off for a minute. So it's a slightly heavier coat. It's going on lovely. Um, and I've hardly used a drop of the paint. Obviously it's just a small spoon. Um, I 
cut in a bit of air just to dry it off a bit. Right, I'm going to go in with quite a wet coat. So, make sure my paint's coming through. And... Give it a really, really good wet coat. All the edges. Yeah, that's quite wet and a final heavy blast. You really can blast this stuff on. That's all nice and shiny and wet. Um, so I'm going to let that dry and see how it turns out. And I've hardly used a drop of paint. Okay. Um, so yeah, you see how quick I did that? I did a quick mist coat, slightly heavier coat, then a heavy coat. And when we come back to it, we'll see how that's turned out. So I'm just going to put that on my paint stand to dry just now. I'm just going to show you how easy this is to clean, and I'm not going to use any proprietary cleaners or anything. I'm just going to use standard X28A thinner um, from Tamiya. Um, just to show you how easy this stuff is to clean. I'm just going to put a tiny wee bit in, and just pull that through in the airbrush. To empty my cup. Another splash in. Uh, where's my big jar for the base stuff? Okay, so I've got a pile of kitchen roll on hand, as usual when you're cleaning your airbrush. Basically what I'm doing on these, I'm going to do colour changes, because I've got uh, another five to go through, and I'm going to try and work through the lighter colours. I'm not sure how much the, the red or the blue will stain. Uh, the black normally does take a little bit more clean up, um, and the metallic, I'll see how that cleans up as well. So, yeah, um... Do a bit of blowback through the cup. And I'll get my, uh, put a bit too much thinner in there, but I'm just going to get my brush in and give it a bit of munge about, as you do. So, I'm not using any special thinners or cleaners. It's just ordinary isopropyl alcohol based um, Tamiya X. 20, and uh, what I will need to get myself is a couple of new cotton buds, which I do happen to have off to my side here, just bear with me. Yeah, so give that a good munge. Tip it out, don't want that, it'll be white. And uh, I'll just go in about the, the nose cone and give that a little bit of a, a wipe off. As far as residual spray in the room, there isn't a lot. Um, there's no horrible smells. I've not got a respirator on, I'm just using my, my air booth. Just pull my needle back there and give that a wee clean out or a good Scotch word a wee deeked out. Yeah, so that's the worst of that out. A bit more in, just a tiny wee drop. Give it another munge about with my, my brush. And I'll just draw my needle back to get up the needle a bit. As I say, this is a colour change, not a full strip down and clean. Um, I'll just take that wee bit of thing off the tip again. With the needle back, obviously. And I'll pour this away as well. So I'm not using an airbrush cleaner, I'm just using X20A. That's how easy this stuff is to clean up. Another wee splash in. With it being a flesh tone, it might take a wee while to come out. You know how some of the matte whites and everything take a wee while. Some of the stuff on this might just be coming off my brush. It's not looking too bad there at all. I'll give it a wee blow back. Still a bit of colour in there, tip that away, got a wee clean out, another wee touch X28, another wee blowback, tied a little bit of cloudiness because they are matte paints, 
and I'm just using X20A, I'm not using any special cleaner. Almost clean. Not really clean. Tiny wee splash again. Wee bit of blowback. That's come through perfectly clean now. So I can blow that away. Airbrush is ready to go. I'll just uh, wipe any rubbish off of there. Might actually go on with the next colour just for the fun of it. So that's a quick colour change. Okay, I just keep my old coffee jars for putting my, my stuff in. Let's put that aside. What colour will we go for now? Will we go for the pink or will we go for the brown? We'll go for the pink one. Nice bright pink. A wee shake up. Get myself another spoon. And judging by how much I used the last time, I'll not need much in this at all. So really, this is how easy this stuff is to use. So that was just a quick clean. I'll put a few drops in there. Basically just covering the bottom of the, the brush. Is that in short? Okay. Pull the colour through. And it real oh that's a nice colour, I like that. And see how fine a line, I don't know if that's coming up on camera. I can actually paint with that. That's this is my point five. Okay. And that was actually sitting at 15 PSI because I forgot to switch my compressor on. So I'm just letting the pressure build up again. So it just shows you, I do think the new ones are slightly thinner because uh, I switched my compressor off there and uh, I was down to 15 PSI and I was still spraying away nicely, writing my name and everything. So I'll go in again with a fine mist coat. Just to break the surface tension. A wee bit along the edges. And uh, I'll let that sit and flash off just for a wee minute. So it's quite a nice pink. I don't know if it's like a primer pink. Um, I tend to do a lot of motorbikes, so I'm not sure what I would primer pink under. Maybe a red. Depends what you're going for. If you want a really bright red, you would go white. Sorry for all the noise, that's all my compressors and everything. Right, so I'll go on my slightly heavier coat. That's all the edges. Still haven't got it wet yet, so I'll let that sit for another wee minute. Quite a nice pink. Hardly use a drop of paint. And, and it's because it's the uh, paint pigment's nice and thick, so you really don't use a lot of this primer. So I'm just going to blow it off with the airbrush. And this is real time, so you can see that, you know, I'm not taking ages. I'm not having to do a thin coat and wait five hours and then do another thin coat. That was a, a mist coat, a thin coat. I'm going to go into a wetter coat now. And round the edges. Up around the top, get a nice wet coat on this. It's starting to look nice and wet now, and just a final heavy blast. Right, that's all nice and wet and shiny. So, you get the gist of that. So, I'm going to go off and do another colour change. So, I've got one, two, three, four, four more to do. So, no point in you sitting watching all of them. You've seen the first colour change, you see how easy it is to clean up, and that's just using Tammy X20A. That's not using like any airbrush cleaners or anything. Yeah? So, back in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back. Right, that was uh, really quick actually. Um, seven colour changes. Um, I've sprayed the six new ones and the original, and they're drying. So, I'll move them off to dry just now. Um, clean up wise, um, the 
flesh tone one, uh, the flesh tone one and the pink. Now, bear in mind, I was just using standard uh, Tammy X28 thinner to clean up and not um, a proprietary brush cleaner. The flesh and uh, the pink took a little bit more to clean up because obviously there's there's a little touch of red pigment in there and we all know what it's like with red. Um, easiest one to clean up um, was the blue. Um, brown, really easy as well. They've, they've all sprayed on beautifully. The blacks were just like standard blacks and even the metallic um, didn't take too long to get all the colour off. But just to, as you can see, I've done all my fancy. <laughs> when I'm spraying, I, I pull the paint through and uh, if I can sign my name, it's kind of the right consistency. So there's some lovely colours on there. I'm just going to go on to the other side of this. So what I'm going to do is, because I've done seven different paints and I've just fired them through the brush, and all I've done is been doing quick colour changes. Um, let's just pull a needle out this and see how we get on. So, how far away are we there? Right, so there's a the crown cap off. And there's a the cap off as well. So, I'm not looking straight. It's not looking bad actually. Tiny, tiny wee bit of paint build up there. Right, let's give me pull the camera in a bit. Can we, can we? Pull it in just a little touch. Right. I know a lot of folk think high waters are a pain in the backside to clean. They're not really. Um, got one of these wee puzzle wrenches. I find this <clears throat> easier than the harder steam becks um, to clean because of the way that the cup is all integrated. Um, it's re really easy to get in there and clean that out. Um, obviously it's a bit of a faff. I need to stop using that word faff, that must be my word of the week. Um, the wee nozzle wrench tool is quite good because you just unscrew it, right? And it comes away in the in the wrench. Um, so we'll release the needle forwards, not backwards, so you'll damage the seal. And see what mess our needle's in. Um, bearing in mind it was just, there's been two different flesh tones, a pink, a blue, a metallic, a brown, and two blacks through this. Yet, I haven't got it all off, right, and there's a wee bit on the tip, but uh, considering that was uh, seven quick colour changes, um, so I'll just put a wee bit of X28 onto my, my cloth. Oh, let's see how easy this stuff, the residual stuff, comes off my, my needle. And what we're kind of getting on it. Right, we'll put a wee bit of the, the black there. Seems to be a bit more at the tip. We'll just work it a bit. As I say, I'm not using any other kind of cleaner other than X28 on this. I'm just working it up there. Let's get a cotton bud. A wee bit X28 here on the cotton bud. And the only reason I'm not using a brush cleaner is just to prove a point how easy this stuff is to clean. So I'm just working my needle. Um. I don't normally, when I'm painting, I'm not normally going seven different colour changes one after the other after the other, unless I'm doing demos for you guys. There's not a lot come off in that cotton bud. So, I think my needle's looking nice and clean there. Mm. That will do for me. That will certainly do for me. Um, let's give that a wee clean out. And the inside of this a wee clean out. I rarely get any problems with this brush. This brush is excellent. As I say, some people find eye water really hard to clean. Never really had any problems. Um, 
I'm not going to take that out. It's not even look as if it's got anything on it. I'll just um, screw it back into my brush. This is a bit you've got to take care of it, is getting it on the right thread and just gently turning it till it touches. Tiny wee tweak. Done. And uh, I'll just take the tiny wee bit of crap off the outside there. Job done. Job done. So, folk go, oh, that badger stuff's office stuff to clean. Um, well, I've done seven colour changes and I've only used X20A. <sighs> you know? And there wasn't that much on the needle. Nice action. Let's check its seat properly. Once it in, screw it up. Oh. I actually haven't bothered screwing this end on the other, but brush cleaned. Yeah. Some quick colour changes, all using X20, brush cleaned, ready to go for the next day. And I'll just set that in there. I only want to strip it because I had a metallic through it. I'll stick a wee bit of uh, X20 in it. Overnight. But uh, yeah, done. Dusted. So, um, I'm going to go back to the bench now and um, let's have a look at these swatches. Well, these swatches, these spoons, and see what lovely colours that these new uh, primers give us. And uh, that'll be us then. So we'll, we'll change the camera uh, back to bench mode and see you in a couple. Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Smooth Watch Up. Right. All of these paints sprayed flawlessly. Um, from my own observations, um, I've, I've sprayed the original Black Steiner Res. I've uh, sprayed the new uh, Light Flesh Tone, the new Ebony Flesh Tone. Uh, this one is the Dull Pink. This one is the Oceanic Blue. This is a new Metallic one. And this is the new Gloss Black. Um, all of them sprayed flawlessly. What I would say is that all the new ones are slightly thinner in consist consistency than the original um, Black Steiner Res in the map. Um, and when I was shooting them through the airbrush, I forgot to turn my compressor on and the uh, the light flesh one was still spraying at 15 PSI. No problem. Could still sign my name and everything like that. So I, I don't know because I don't have the information about how the makeup of the paint is done. But it seems that the newer range is slightly thinner than the original Steiner Res. I remember I used to have a problem with the white, um, because white is generally a very heavy pigment. That's the only one I've ever had to thin. Uh, then thinking the white, I do a 60-40. But that's just my personal experience with my airbrush and the pressures that I use. I've got hiccups now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh dear, I'm dying. Right. So... I don't know how clear these are coming up for you, so I'm going to flash a picture up. Um, sometimes a, a photo is a bit better, so that's up there. And there's another picture. So yeah, that's kind of the colour, so really quite impressed. So shall we try and come in a little bit closer? We'll try and come in a little bit closer. Let's see if the magic of the camera will let me... still haven't got my new gimbal yet. So let's see if I can come in a little bit closer here. Still have them all in shot. Right, so this is the original black. As you can see, it gives you a lovely satin black sheen. Now, any paint blemishes on these spoons or whatever is due to my prep and not due to the paint. So, lovely, lovely silky black. Now, that's the original one that I did the review on. Now, the new one, the gloss, look at the difference. Yeah, you can actually see my two lights. Um, reflecting oh, try to have them in such a way you can see them my two lights reflecting back there so you can imagine um these are both badger steiner s primer this is the one that we were used to using 
And if we want to go for a high gloss metallic, we would possibly put a, a gloss black on that and then do the metallic. Look at the new one. That's cutting that stage out altogether. You can put this stuff on and put your gloss metallic on and away you go. So yeah, so that's that's the two blacks. That's the original on the left, the one that's wiggling just now, and the new gloss black on the right. <clears throat> so the other one's a flesh stone, the light flesh stone. Um, to my eye, it's a nice colour. It's a nice fleshy tone colour. So if you're a figurine painter, you know, and you're doing your... Um, resin models that would be quite a nice base coat to go down that's not going to affect your, your flesh tones going on top um i've never painted any dark skinned figures um this to me is, is quite a darkish brown uh this is the the ebony flesh so that's what they've got um i don't know how well this is picking up with the color balance and the light balance and everything but that is a new ebony flesh so it's it's a darkish brown it's a lovely matte brown nice and silky um this is the the dull pink okay so hopefully you're getting the right color on there up to you guys what you would use the colors for um you know what what you would you would prefer to go on top of that but there's a nice pink there as a primer and then we're on to this uh what they call the oceanic blue that's a lovely color yeah so if you want to go for a deep royal blue or something going on top of that, it might be quite nice. I'm not an expert in painting, so I'm just all I'm going to do is show you the primer colours. And you can decide for yourself, oh, that primer would be nice underneath a certain colour and would give me the accent or colour that I want. So that's uh, the blue. Right, that's metallic one. Oh, I'm quite impressed with that, actually. Now, although my lights are shining off of it, it's got a bit of a... Uh, well, these are very matte. Um, the flesh... The ebony flesh, um, the dull pink, and the oceanic blue. The uh, metallic one has a slightly satin sheen to it, and there are some metallic flecks in it. I'm just trying to see if it will catch the light. And it's went on lovely and smooth. So <clears throat> that's an option, maybe if you're... I'm only just using my imagination here, you know. You maybe prime in the metallic, and then you put a colour on top, and you want to chip back. Uh, to show the metal underneath, you know, that's just an idea, but that's that's a new metallic one, I like that as well, but yeah, it's, it's, I can certainly see me using this um, gloss black a lot, so that is my review of the, uh, that's really got quite a nice depth of shine in it, as I say, it's not polished up, there are a couple of blemishes on the spoon, um, that is my review of the new range of Steiner Res colours, that's the original, and these are the six new ones, if you want to get these in the UK, um, they do have a website, Barwell UK Airbrush Supplies. Um, <clears throat> but they're basically known as Barwell Body Works. Uh, they're based in Leicestershire in England. And their website is there, uh, www.barwellbodyworks.com. And it's Steve Puffer that runs, runs the place. And uh, here endeth my review of the lovely new Steiner Res colour. So it's a bit long-winded. A lot of my reviews are a bit long-winded. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope you found it informative. Um, I've went through the new colours, uh, how I prep my paint. I've even showed you how they go on, how easy they are to clean from the airbrush. And I mean, I've went through these seven colours doing quick colour changes and I quick clean them with my needle. And you're not normally doing that kind of stuff. So. Same Steiner Res quality as all the other colours that you're used to. And um, I'll just hold this up. And this is a, the colours, the current range of colours. Now, I'm not sure if the green and the brown has changed slightly in their tones in their latest releases. Um, but uh, white, grey and black, must for your toolbox. Absolutely a must. I haven't used the yellow, green or red myself. Um, I can definitely see me using a new black gloss and possibly the the flesh tone, um, but that's the six new ones. So I've covered them all. Hope you find it informative. Um, this probably supersedes my previous one that I did in the black stein already because I've got better camera and lighting and everything now. So uh, I'm going to end that just now. Uh, thanks to Steve Puffer at uh, Barwell Body Shop. 
uh, for sending me the, the the samples of the of the new primers, uh, so I can show you guys, and obviously I can have a play with them and see see what happens as well. I've actually, got a plan for these, um, but that's a different review. So uh, this is Terry at Smooth Workshop. Uh, as always, um, these are my own views on the products, and um, most of all, happy modelling. Um, if anything, you want to know more information about any of these. Um, just comment in the comment section down below. Uh, do be constructive, please. And uh, yeah, until my next review or inbox review or one of my step-by-step -step model builds. Um, happy modeling. Bye.